let's run through a few graphic simulations. We have a car. It's going to appear at the bottom, and it's going to move across a screen. Can you graph that motion? There we have the position and the velocity versus time graphs. There's the average velocity. It was the same as the velocity that we had the whole time. It's just a constant velocity. Problem two. Now that velocity changed instantaneously. In real life, you would have a connection there. The average velocity is right down the middle because both the slow speed and the fast speed went on for the same amount of time. Problem three. No big surprises here. Where is the average velocity? Oh, this time it's closer to the slow speed because that one went on for a longer time. Problem four. Now, did you get how it started at a distance far away from the origin? Now you can see the velocities are negative because it was going backwards. Average velocity. Problem five. Now look at that average velocity. It's zero. How could it be zero? The car was always moving. A velocity is a vector. And so the average velocity is zero because the car was going forward and backwards. But if it was just the average speed we were looking for, then it would just be one of those two velocities with an absolute value. Problem six. Notice the car sat there for a little while before it moved. Notice the graphs are progressing because time goes on even while that car is sitting there. Problem seven. Constant acceleration. Average velocity is right down the middle. Look at the area under the average velocity graph and compare it to the area under the instantaneous velocity graph. Those are the same areas because it went the same distance. Problem eight. Yeah, it's speeding up, going backwards. Now that's a little hard to tell the subtle motion of the car, but it did speed up going backwards and it was constant for just a little while and then it slowed down and came to a stop and it stayed there for a while with zero velocity. Average velocity is all negative. Problem nine.
Well, that's complicated, huh? Let's look at it again. Or the average velocity is almost zero. It's because the displacement was not much. We'll look at it again in slow motion. Yeah, we're speeding up constant velocity. And now look what happens when the car slows down, it comes to a stop. Velocity was zero just when the peak occurred on the position versus time graph. The slope was zero at the top of that position versus time graph. I'm skipping number 10 and going to problem 11. And that's one constant acceleration. It had an initial negative velocity going backwards, came to a stop, and then went forwards. That agrees with the slope on the position versus time graph. The average velocity is zero because the displacement ended up being zero. Problem 12. Looks familiar, doesn't it? The same thing, except in reverse. We're going to problem 14. And that's a little tricky to see that happening with the car, but it did, it, it started with a constant slow velocity, sped up, and it finished with a constant velocity. 